Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Trout, joined by Alan Malventano, and we're here today to talk about hard drives. The latest and greatest in computer technology, spinning disks, no more floppy disks, which were also oh, spinning disks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no more tape. About, no more tape, tape drives, no more zip, no more jazz. Today, Thank hard goodness. drives. <laughs> so, uh, we're looking at not just any hard drive, though. This is like a super high capacity drive, eight terabytes. Eight terabytes consumer. Consumer. Okay, eight terabytes in the enterprise has been a thing for a little bit. It's been a thing for a while. This is a HE8 Careful. HTST drive. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All so right. it's a helium filled enterprise drive that gives you eight terabytes capacity, but now we have an eight terabyte Western Digital drive. Okay. It gives you that same capacity. And as you can tell from what's on the screen right here, actually these two, yeah. uh, they look kind of similar. They have the same kind of all white labeling to them. Yeah, yeah, there's this little like the angled pieces in the corner <laughs> right. here are the same. It's almost as if it's the same housing. Almost as if. Almost. Now, HGST is actually owned by Western Digital now, correct? They are now, yes. Yeah, okay. That was, yeah. That's something that's kind of been in the process for a while. It has because there's something with other countries and like regulations sure. or something, right? They, they, they wanted to do that a long time ago, but they had to pace their acquisition and emerging of uh, corporate like technical assets and stuff like that. So what changes in the bump up to eight terabytes spec-wise? What are we expecting? Throughputs, uh, higher throughput, does that go up? Do we get reduced uh, latencies? Like what are you kind of seeing here? So the throughput uh, is not that big of a change. Okay, um, compared to the six terabyte. Compared to reds. the six terabyte, yeah. At least not in the specs. When you look at specs, it's only a few megabytes per second okay. faster in the specs. Uh, power consumption seems to scale as you might expect, like as you get higher capacities, power consumption goes. That was slightly. interesting. We were talking about that earlier. I didn't realize it. That you, the, in general, we kind of we're kind of seeing power consumption per gigabyte scaling accordingly. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, actually, it's that spec tends to go like lower power consumption oh, per gigabyte or a terabyte. Capacity. Yeah, for, okay. for the higher. In other words, the, the ratio of power per capacity right. is like still lowering, right? Gotcha. Even though the eight terabyte drive is going to consume more power than the older six, six terabyte. terabyte. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, there is the other thing of uh, that HGST was really a uh, big proponent of when they were, um, you know, when they were trying to sell their helium technology initially right. saying, oh, it's like such and such percentage lower power consumption, perfect for data centers. Right. Um, and they were attributing that to how fast the platters are spinning and that there's air turbulent resistance, stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Helium's less dense. Uh, yeah. So it gives you less heat production, less power consumption, like a bunch I of... I would have thought that spinning disks were fairly aerodynamic. Oh, well, I mean, that's... If you think about it, the, the disks are spinning. The, the idle power consumption is pretty much nothing but the motor's effort to spin the disks. Okay. Right. right. So, so I, I yeah. don't know if we pointed it out, but this is this is the first Western Digital red drive that is helium filled. It's the first uh, any consumer drive that's helium filled. Okay. And what is the what is the inherent benefit of that? Um, so here, that's it's kind of gets a little bit tricky because this is a 5400 RPM drive. Okay. The enterprise drives from HGST were 7200 RPM. Mm -hmm. So you, air turbulence is like a exponential. Right. gain on like resistance. So if you drop the platter speed by 33%, then it gets to the point where the that that argument is not really that much of a thing. The benefit anymore. of helium versus air. Yeah, for power consumption yeah. is okay. not that big of a difference. Um, yeah, so that just kind of makes it a bit of a wash on the power consumption okay. thing, or, you know, as far as the But is there, is there a performance benefit then to having helium? Is there a, a reliability benefit to having helium? Well, so the, the the main reason for Western Digital doing helium here is more than likely to give you that eight terabyte capacity. Okay. So probably bumping up against limits with the old tech mm -hmm. on what they could do with just regular air floating around the platters. Okay. As opposed to higher density technology, you know, it's not only that, but they're merging with HDST. They already have technology that does eight terabytes. Tech. Right. They're already sharing tech, so they're gonna you know kind of borrow some of the physical design and probably do some of the firmware. Stuff gotcha. that Washington Digital does on the red side, they'll carry that into it, right? So uh, the, the the red line from Western Digital has always been targeted towards people who are using multi drives, people who are doing RAID configurations. That still stays the same. Yep. With the eight terabyte helium filled, um, what changes then in like either internals or performance? What's what stands out about it? Uh, so internals, uh, this is these. Obviously, we didn't take them apart. <laughs> well, I didn't take them all the way apart. I did take the PCBs off of the back. Okay. Um, noted that the components are identical between the HE8 
-hmm. and the red eight terabyte. Okay. So same LSI chip driving it, like same kind. So we're looking at the know, same platform. It's basically the same platform. PCBs are nearly identical. Okay. Um, not a lot of changes there. Uh, differences between the old and the new. You could tell there's a difference between, like, there's uh, we have some pictures in the article where there's uh, places where they had to use that helio seal technology. Uh, you know, there's no vent hole, mm, right? right? Obviously, the helium would just get out. Helium um, would escape in a vent you, hole. You, you have to package <laughs> you have to package these drives differently in uh, in order to be able to make that seal that helium does not escape from. Helium's very small mm -hmm. atoms, so likes to escape from seals. So you mm -hmm. have to do like really like special. Balloons. Yeah, just like balloons, right? You wouldn't want your hard drive to deflate over the period of a month, just like a no, balloon. No, that would be bad. That would be bad. That would be a bad sign. Um, so, you know, those just some physical changes some physical that go along traits. with it. Um, now, as far as uh, getting into just, like, read transfer rates, yeah. um, you get about, like, a 15 20% bump in throughput over the 6 terabyte. Hmm. Okay. So, right, like, what's your kind of sequential read speed, then? Uh, it starts out at 191 meg per second okay. and uh, tapers off to 85 at the end of the disk. Right, right, right. So that's, that's, I mean, that's, we're not talking SSD speeds here, everybody. No, like, Remember, no. we're talking about hard drives. Yeah, but, but, but at least, but at least we're, good increase. you know, we're actually getting kind of up there for hard drive speeds. Yeah. Like for, and that's only a 5,400 RPM disk. Mm -hmm. So if Western Digital, Digital later made a Red Pro that was equivalent of that, like right. you'd have you what, know, over 200 meg per second. What's the speed of, on this one? The run to 7,200. Uh, the throughputs? Yeah. Actually, I don't have that in our chart. Okay. But um, it is faster. It it's is like, faster. Yeah. So we would assume that eventually they might make a Red Pro that's something like that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What we're looking at basically is kind of sort of a 5400 RPM version of the, right. the HE8. Okay. Right. Um, so there's that. Uh, some of the other benefits that carried over we saw in um, our file copy test, which does a lot of repetitive like copying from the drive to the drive just in a different location mm -hmm. on it. Um, usually that kind of makes things slow down, but we saw like uh, a pretty huge dip. like. This drive is going almost as fast as 7200 RPM drives, and some of the okay. some of the workloads because it just it seems more optimized. Like some of that enterprise stuff kind of carried over hmm. okay. um, in that test, so that was an interesting point. Um, anything that has to do with IOs per second scaling, like iometer stuff, uh, this drive is the the top performer in 5400 RPM drives. Hmm. Okay. That we tested, right? So now is that a matter of the firmware again, or is that a matter more of platter density, or it's it's a combination of density, a little bit of firmware, okay. in there. It has more cache, it has 128 mega cache versus 64 on the, the prior models, okay. right? Um, the uh, interesting stuff we saw is this is the first time we're doing latency percentile testing on hard disks, right? Usually we're, we've seen them on SSDs. We've before. we've used that testing on SSDs. Um, when you use it on hard disks, you see some other cool things. Um, for random reads, what I noted is that this drive at the beginning, like at, at not the beginning, sorry, at low um, Q depths, mm -hmm. very just one transaction at a time sort of thing, right. right? This drive acts almost identically to the older six terabyte model. Okay. Okay. But as you climb in the Q depth up to Q depth 32, which is the max for SATA, this drive starts to behave more like the AG8. Okay. So. Which is better. It's I actually assume, right? better, yeah. So it's e even if they had the same firmware, somehow this drive is approaching this one and doing so even though it's spinning 33% slower. Okay. Um, which is interesting, yeah. right? And so, so for Western Digital doing some kind of tweaks in there to even hmm. make it a little bit more enhanced, hmm. right? That's for reads. Now for writes, you can't really directly compare to the HE8 because it does this... Um, uh, this thing called media cache architecture it does some kind of special thing where it's able to somehow handle how it's writing to the media in a different way where it basically gets like almost double the IOs per second. Unique to this, this series it's of drives. It's, unique it's not used to, in the red. It's unique to the HE8 platform. It's unique to HDST's enterprise drives. Okay. Um, so you don't get that benefit. But this, uh, the um, 8 terabyte red still pulls away from the 6 terabyte in random writes. Okay. And you can you have to look at the chart to see like exactly yeah. in yeah. what way it does. But basically it's just giving you more IOs per second uh, performance than the previous model, even though you know a lot of the other specs are similar and it's still spinning at the same speed. Right. Right. Usually at a at a fixed spindle speed and at a fixed uh, seek time, which they're basically both the same, right? Um, typically you would see the same kind of performance in random writes. Hmm. But in this case we don't. Probably part of it is because again you have double the cache, so it's able to buffer more of those okay. reads coming or those write requests coming in. It's able to you know reorganize them as it's writing to the disks a little bit more gotcha. optimally. Yeah. 
So um, performance is pretty good on this. What about power draw? You you did some measurements yep, yep. on that too. We did uh, we did power consumption tests. We did um, this is the first time we're actually doing this, so I kind of just went crazy on it. Did idle testing, sequential read and write, random read and write, and standby, like when the drive actually spins down. Oh, okay. um, that's important because if it's in a NAS box that does standby, and especially if you're not using your NAS at your house that much, right. and it's fitting the drives down Seems very often. Likely. Yeah, you'd, you'd probably want to see that. Um, so we included two different styles of results here. One is just like, what's the numbers? Like, what's the watts coming off of the drive, regardless mm -hmm. of like not compensating for the capacity? And the other results is like, you know, per, terabyte. So power, power consumption draw. per terabyte of, yep. of capacity. Yep. Okay. And so power consumption per terabyte, uh, this is the winner. Hmm. Okay. Like pretty much across the board. Okay. Um, which is cool, right? Like you want the power consumption to go down as the capacity is going up. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's, I, I don't know how, I don't know how many of, of our viewers and readers really are interested in that from their consumer systems necessarily, like sure. a, a couple of watts here or there. But if you are talking about mass install bases in, in enterprise and, yeah. and server rooms, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. Or if you're like, you want to put these drives in a NAS that's in your home and you're like on solar or something and you're actually like care about okay. how much power yeah. draw you have. Because this is something that will be on all the time. Right. Right. Um, uh, we did note that the idle power draw or the standby power draw is higher on these. Both compared, helium drives. Yeah, both helium drives. It's actually an identical number. Okay. So it's, it's the same hardware right. in an idle state. So it makes sense. It's, you know, same number. Um, and there actually was only like, uh, it worked out to 0.3 watts difference between these two. So there's, there's your difference due to the rotation speed. Okay. Right, you know, faster versus slower. Sure. Um, and that's pretty much it uh, for pricing. Yeah, that's what everybody wants to know in here. Yeah, so I don't, we're not sure exactly what the MSRP is supposed to be right now, but I can tell you that they're on the market for 333 bucks right now. Like while the we're recording. The 8 terabyte red is 333 on Amazon. On, on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that comes in at four cents per gig. Okay. Which is pretty low. So um, when, the, when the six terabyte red launched, yeah. it was five cents per gig. What is it now? Is it. It's lower than that. It's like right around four. It's so if if you ratio Close. these two, there's a little bit of a premium on the eight terabyte red. I mean, it's just just hitting the market. Mm -hmm. So actually, like Newegg has it even higher, like forty bucks higher or something like that oh, right really? now. So okay. um, I think the prices are going to stable out. Uh, they should stable at, stabilize out to three hundred dollars for this model because there is uh, like the MyBook Pro also launched and its MSRP is three hundred bucks. <laughs> It has, Using this, this drive it has this drive in it. So the bare drive... It's always been confusing Yeah, yeah the bare drive should at least match that or potentially <laughs> go lower, right? Right. Um, so that's so in which case, you're going to drop your cost per gig down a little bit below four. Yeah. Three point whatever. Three point, three point, point, three point nines, three yeah. Three point something, yeah. Uh, per gig. So, that, I mean, that's... I mean, it's obviously a different world than SSDs when we're talking about cost per, per gig. Is yep. this just kind of like, hey, if you are trying to fill a NAS to its maximum capacity... And like, or you're building a system and you want to have, you know, you want to have a RAID 10 or whatever it is in your system, a RAID 5 array, and you just want to use the largest drives you can get. Yeah. Is this kind of your new default it, it drive is. for that? And, and just generally with NAS drives, if you're going to build a NAS and you're at that stage where you're, you're about to spend money on hard drives, mm -hmm. right? You want to go with the hardest drive you can get. And, you know, if you have a four bay NAS, you wouldn't want to necessarily fill all four bays right away. Sure. Right. So if you can afford to splurge a little bit and get a four bay NAS versus a two bay, mm -hmm. and then you only need two of these drives to get your redundancy, and if you only had eight terabytes or less of stuff, that's a good starting point. Right. And then you still have the extra bays there. Right. Right. So you so always if you add a third in. Yeah. Add a fourth. Yeah. In, so yeah. so you might spend an extra like ten bucks per drive or something. You know when you can figure out the cost per terabyte mm -hmm. and all, but. In, in the end, you're you're not trying to do an, your next upgrade cycle involving. Well, now I have to replace all of my drives that right. I bought. Like you have right. to replace if you bought sixes at first. Later, you have to replace the sixes with eights and maybe even buy additional ones. So that's, you know, you just kind of want to go with the higher capacity if you can. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I mean, I guess that's that's pretty much the the, the kind of ending conclusion here to that is yeah. like this this is meant for multi drive arrays. Like we've recommended this for single drives as well. Even in our VR builds, I've recommended, you know, hey, if you want to go up for the reds, you can. Even if you're just going to buy one now, you can add a second one later if it's if you're on that type Th of that's, budget. That's the reason we argue that, right? Is yeah. if, you, if you started with a green or some or black or something like that, well, 
actually blacks are kind of rated for doing a raid as well. But like, if you were going for more power efficient drives, you might as well go for the red to start with because when you do add that second drive, right. you want a raid enabled drive and that's what the red is. Right. So this is called the, what? it's just called the Western Digital a terabyte, a red? terabyte red. So they yeah. don't really give any outward indication that it's kind of like this special helium. No, tech. no. Even their their Other spec than sheet, the, the label similarities. It, here. Yeah, their spec sheet for the red line it just has the a terabyte like in the same row as huh. as the previous ones. Yeah, that's interesting. All right. Well, we'll have uh, the rest of the review obviously up on pcper.com mm -hmm. and uh, benchmarks and and pricing and links to all that type of stuff. If you are interested, uh, that's it from us for now, guys. See you next time. Bye. Thanks. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.